السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ وعلیکم السلام و رحمتہ اللہ وبرکاتہ دس از ایم ایم تمیم آئی ایم فرام بنگلہ دیش ہاؤ کین وی انکریز اوور میموری پاور اینڈ ورک سو فاسٹ ہاؤ کین وی میمورائز سو فاسٹ اینڈ ریمبر اٹ فار لانگ از دین سیکرٹ پلیز پرے فار می ٹو اللہ دیٹ ای گیو مور پیشنس اینڈ انکریز مائی پاور میں اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ گیو یو مور صبر اینڈ انکریز دا پاور انکریز دا میموری کم انٹو کوشچن دیٹ ہاؤ کین وی انکریز اوور میموری پاور ہاؤ کین یو میمورائز سو فاسٹ اینڈ ہاؤ ڈو یو میمورائز فار سو لانگ نارملی دیر آر ویریس ٹیکنیکس دیٹ یو فائنڈ ان کورسز فار میموری and if you google and there are many courses of how you can give the memory there are courses like mapping and different techniques of memory but i personally feel that the best way to memorize is the help of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there are three points which are always mentioned in my dawah training program or for success in any matters number one is the help of allah Allah says in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse number 160 If Allah helps you then none can overcome you If Allah forsakes you who is there then who can help you So let the believers put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So number one help of Allah Trust in Allah believe in him have faith in him his help is number one for your success Without his help you cannot get success You may get temporary success but not ultimate success in this world and the akhirah Number two Allah says in the Quran in Surah Ankabut chapter number 29 verse number 69 that if you strive in his path Allah will open up his pathways for you so if you strive and if you struggle if you do jihad in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will open your pathways so number two is after having faith in Allah you should strive and struggle you should do hard work and number three is Allah says in Surah Nahal chapter 16 verse 43 And Surah Anbiya chapter number 21 verse number 7 Fas'alu ahali zikri in kuntum la ta'lamun If you don't know, ask the person who is knowledgeable The last is the technique So number one for memory of any success is ask for Allah's help See that your niyah is very pure See that you are doing it for sake of Allah And only to gain the pleasure of Allah Number two, strive and struggle And number three is the technique As far as the memory is concerned, there are different types of memory. There is something like a temporary memory, something like an immediate memory, and something which is memory of the past, something which is a permanent memory. So normally when you memorize, whether you're memorizing the Quran or whether you're memorizing a lecture or whether you're memorizing any matter, hard work is important. And depending upon Allah's help, some people may read it once. they may have a photogenic memory and it goes in their memory for long you know for example imam bukhari mashallah allah had given him a photogenic memory his memory was phenomenal he didn't have to work hard like us that was allah's help so if you have that level of help of allah then that is ultimate but naturally the iman was high and his and the help of allah also was high but Generally, everyone should seek Allah's help, number one. Number two, strive and struggle. So what you have to do when you memorize, of course, you have to repeat that multiple times. And once you repeat it few times, five times, six times, whether it be one sentence, two sentences, or three sentences, whether it be few of the Quran, or maybe one verse, if you keep on repeating, it goes into your memory, but it goes into your temporary memory. So for it to be... For a longer time, what you have to do, once you repeat it a few times, now, again, repeat it after maybe, maybe half an hour, then repeat it again after two hours, then again after five hours. The more you repeat and memorize, it keeps on going deeper and deeper in your memory. So if you're preparing for a lecture tomorrow, maybe you memorize it, then again repeat it after half an hour, then repeat that thing after two hours, after five hours. You, may, you repeat it few times and then maybe you're able to give the lecture. But after you deliver the lecture, if you ask to deliver the same lecture, after one year you won't be able to do it. Leave us there one year, after one month you can't do it. Even after one week you may not be able to do it because it was only in your temporary memory. So what you have to do after you have delivered the lecture, you have to keep on repeating it. Or if you are giving a lecture again after a month, again you... you memorize it so if you want 
it to be part of your permanent memory, then you have to do muraja, you have to do revision. And that's what is done by the people who have the Quran. If you memorize the Quran, you know, if you memorize the full Quran, you're called Hafiz al-Quran. That means you memorize the full Quran by heart. But if you really analyze most of the Hufas that are there in the world, there are millions of Hufas, but all of them cannot repeat the Quran in one go. Or they may memorize the Quran, they memorize a few verses, then maybe a few surahs, then maybe a juz, maybe two juz. The Bible, they keep on memorizing the full Quran, 30 juz. Then they may forget the first juz or the second juz or third juz unless they do muraja. So the different techniques of memorizing, if you keep on memorizing, going ahead and don't revive your past memory, you will forget it. So what they do when you memorize a few pages, when you keep on going ahead, you even keep on revising what you had memorized yesterday or what you memorized a week back or what you memorized a month back. Of course, the more you keep on memorizing, the, if the volume keeps on increasing, the juicy memorize keep on increasing, to memorize everything is difficult. So, then you have to divide yourself in memorizing new verses of the Quran as well as in doing revision. A time will come that the time for revision is more than the time you are required to memorize the new verses. So, if you do a proper system and once you finish the Quran, normally, when a human being completes memorizing the Quran, he cannot repeat the Quran from first page to the last page. No, that's a misconception. Of course, he has to do muraja. So if he spends time maybe two years in memorizing the Quran, some people take three years, some people finish in one year. The faster you memorize, the faster you forget. There are courses where we are in a school, we will memorize the Quran in two months. It's possible. But if you finish in two months and you stop, after one month, you cannot repeat the Quran. So even if you finish the Quran in two months, if you spend about 10 or 12 hours a day, a crash course, your muraja will take multiple months or years. So it's the same thing. You memorize in two months and you revision for a few years, or you memorize in a few years and take additional few years for revision. So the main secret of memory is that you keep on repeating till the time it goes in your permanent memory. Now, most of the Muslims, majority, they know Surah Fatiha. Because Surah Fatiha has become a part of the memory. Because Muslims are supposed to pray five times a day. And if you pray five times a day, you have to read the minimum 17 rakha, or with, with a 20 rakha. So 20 times if you are repeating in the day, if you wake up that Muslim in the middle of his night, who's been praying regularly, not a Muslim who doesn't pray. If a person who prays regularly, or even if he prays even once a day, if he's praying for many years, if you wake him up from the middle of his sleep and you ask him to recite Surah Fatiha, he can do it easily. Because that has gone into his permanent memory. Even in permanent memory, there are levels. Deep down permanent memory, you know, or not deep down. Same way, if you ask him to recite maybe Surah Khlas, even that may be part of his permanent memory. Might have repeated Surah Khlas many times. But if he doesn't recite a surah maybe once a month, he may not be able to repeat in the middle of his sleep. But with concentration, he can repeat it because it's part of his permanent memory, but requires concentration. There may be certain things he memorized just recently. Unless he doesn't do muraja, he cannot repeat it. So that's the reason there are different types of memory. And I know that I have given several talks in my life. I know there are these few talks, maybe these five or six talks, you ask me to get up from my sleep and give a talk, I can give a talk without revision. Even if there are 50 verses of the Quran, 100 verses of the Quran, because those talks are part of my permanent memory deep down. There are other talks I may have to revise maybe for 15 minutes. Some talks I may have to revise for one hour, some maybe two hours. Those talks which I give rarely, I may have to revise for three hours or four hours. So every talk of mine is not part of my permanent memory. Part of the talk may be, but not everything. And the more goes in your permanent memory, it helps you in the question answer session. In the question answer session, you may not have notes. You cannot have notes in front of you. Question answer session when you give live. So when you're giving a talk, you can memorize your talk and deliver the talk. But question answer session is something you aren't aware. Okay, here, because we're having question answer on the WhatsApp, etc., you know, it's being filtered by my staff. And so some of the questions which I've received before from my staff, of course, 
that I've seen, so I can prepare if I want. And some of the questions I take live from the Facebook, from the YouTube, those questions which I take live are new questions. But normally, when we are handling an open question or session in public, we are not aware of a single question. We can assume what may come and we can prepare for ourselves, but we don't know. So that time, if you have many lectures which are part of your permanent memory, that helps you in the question or session. Therefore, I tell all my students, when you give a talk, don't carry notes. If you don't carry notes, you keep on repeating, it becomes part of your memory. Because in a question and session, you cannot carry notes and search for the answer. It has to be from your memory. So if you have 50, 100 talks as a part of a permanent memory, some deep down, some superficial, but if it's part of a permanent memory, then that helps you in the question and session. So as far as the formula for memory, number one is help of Allah. You pray to Allah, ask Allah to give you good memory. Pray to Allah that you remember, you can pray in your tajus salah. Number two is hard work. You strive, you struggle. Number three is technique. See to it that you keep on doing muraja, you keep on revising. Help of Allah, hard work, revising, till it becomes part of your memory. And if it becomes part of your permanent memory, deep down, it will be for long and inshallah can even be forever. Hope that answers the question.